What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning, happy Wednesday. Happy Cinco de Mayo, folks. I'm excited, I love today. We're gonna have a natural bug going on. I need to eat some tacos, maybe a little fajitas, couple of margaritas. This might be an early day for me. I need to get my party on. Who is celebrating? Let me know in the comments below. I do have to manually approve them because of the spam bots. Listen, if your favorite YouTuber does not have their comment section blocked off, you need to say something. There are so many, I mean, the, all the comments are scams and spams, right? That's it. People are getting destroyed. I've heard horror stories. I'm protecting you guys and girls. I will manually approve comments when I go through them. I will reply to them. But for the time being, until they get this thing under control, we gotta go back to this way. It's unfortunate. But hey, happy Cinco de Mayo. I love today. Wait, is today? Today's Thursday. Is it? Today is Thursday. It's even better. Oh, I'm smiling now like never before. I thought it was Wednesday. You see what happens when kickball and softball come to an end? I lose track of the time because I don't play anything. All the days blend. It's YouTube work, YouTube work, gym, YouTube work. You get it. Anyways, enough about me. I'm sure you can tell I'm in good mood, a really good mood. Listen to what we're about to talk about. MasterCard, Ripple, MAS, all on the same stage. I wonder why. What could they be discussing? APAC in the Middle East on the busiest corridors for XRP on demand liquidity. You don't got to take my word. I'm going to show you the clip from a Ripple employee telling you this. And it's absolutely massive. And then we find out that the opportunity of a lifetime is here. And what are people doing? They are running with their tail tucked between their legs because they are afraid. This is not the time to be afraid. This is the time to embrace. And then breaking news, hot off the press, we got those Bill Hinman emails. Folks, they are released all thanks to an XRP community member. Now, before we head over to live coin watch, please make sure you give me a follow on Twitter at XRP news underscore. All the news I don't cover goes on the Twitter handle. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So many new listeners each and every day, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Now let's head over to Live Coin Watch. We're seeing a little bit of green, and I like green. We got to get Bitcoin back up above 42K, folks. Is it going to do it today? I don't think so. We need a miracle. But hey, we're up 1.28% in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin coming in at $39,523. I'll be loved. XRP is coming in at 63 cents. It wants to be 64 cents. It's up about 3% in the past 24 hours as the broken net Network within Solana has climbed back up to the number seven spot, up almost 5%. Doesn't make sense. You got a network that doesn't work, that's failed. It's pretty much failed once a month from January until now. No, more than that. It's failed a little over once a month. Starting in January, all the way to now, but somehow the price keeps going up. People must have faith in a broken network. I don't get it. Total cryptocurrency market cap has gone up. We are looking at $1.83 trillion. You know, $2 trillion is that magical number I always talk about as the Bitcoin dominance did slide down just a tiny, tiny bit. It is at 40.95%. Now, we're going to get into the news. We're going to get into the juicy stuff. You need to strap in, kick back, get your coffee ready, maybe even a margarita. But up first, listen, come support the store. All this stuff is right here in Florida, shipping to the U.S. for free, two-day express, it's all handmade, these etched beer mugs, these tumblers, whiskey glasses, t-shirts. Listen, if you want something on a t-shirt, I don't have it. Hey, you tell me, hit me up in the DMs, let me know what you want. We got more tumblers, more shirts, sweatshirts, the shot glasses, which are an amazing seller. It's a three pack of shot glasses. Well, each of them have a little bit of a different design. Well, two out of the three have a different design. I don't know what you're waiting for, folks. Get involved. How about some XRP pillows? Let's go. Support this store. Support the merch. And then Crypto Area puts this out. Hot off the press. It's about an hour old. It's getting serious, Gary Gensler. You are falling behind the U.S. since the regulators in Singapore are listening and working with, not against, cryptocurrency companies. This comes from Brooke Answell on a podcast on Spotify. It says an ecosystem enablers with Ripple. It's a two-minute clip. Let's have a go. It's all happening here. And this is a regional headquarters for both at the time Uber and certainly for Ripple. And Ripple, by the way, it's not just a regional headquarters. It's one of our biggest offices. And it also we look after Dubai to Japan, south to Australia from here. So it's a pan regional headquarters out of Singapore. The regulator here reached out, wanted to put people on committees and talk about how to do things in a differentiated way here. I was like, this is magical. And, and by the way, that has 
continued for both Uber and certainly now for Ripple to be a reason why this is such an important ecosystem in place to base a company as we think that we are in, a, in an environment where we have a regulator that is forward thinking, super thorough, is going to get this right and wants to hear from the community, which yeah. is big. I Ripple is an opportunity to build something out of here in Singapore and out of the region. It's, it is, by the way, APAC in the Middle East together, by far the, the busiest corridors on Ripple Nets and, and where the most on-demand liquidity you know, adaptation has is, is come, where you actually put crypto on these lines between countries and between sender and receiver. And as a company, we're so supportive of waiting and watching as the regulator here takes their time as they hand out licenses, is listening to the community. In some parts of the world, you can't even get near the regulator building without kind of getting in trouble. Here, you actually go to a panel. You know, I was on a panel at, at DBS early on in September of last year, one of the first live events I went to. And sure enough, on that panel is MasterCard, Ripple, Tomasic, and the MAS. And I love that. I love a regulator that's on a panel in a room debating. And so I do think that crypto, as it's regulated globally and done the right way, this is not a regional leader opportunity for Singapore. This is a global leadership opportunity that I think is happening here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely tremendous. Listen, why can't the U.S. be like this? These guys are reaching out to the companies over there, asking them. They're asking the community what they want to see, what's going on. But over here, we got Gensler trying to lay down a smackdown. Look at this. Tell me this isn't some BS, folks. Blockwork announces Coinbase will no longer announce asset listings on Twitter. Oh, of course not. So XRP is going to be stealth launched, right? I think we're getting closer, but this is another middle finger to XRP holders. I don't know if you agree with me, but that's what I think this is, folks. Unfreaking believable. And then Lewis puts this out from Rule Paul. He goes, you're missing the opportunity of a lifetime. This is the time, folks. We know where everything's going. Listen to this clip, 51 seconds. It is an unbelievable time. The world has never live through a period of time of Metcalfe's law adoption curves on top of Metcalfe's law adoption curves, creating Reed's law, which is a ridiculously powerful moment in time. We've got this aging population. It's creating tremendous fear because the rate of technological advance is so dramatic. We've never lived anything through it in such a short period of time. But you want to own that bloody stuff. You don't want to fear it. And I see people on Twitter all day, it's like, oh, Kathy Wood, these people are awful. Who wants to own a Tesla? You're fighting the biggest logarithmic trend we are ever going to see. That is the opportunity of a lifetime. So I want to be a buyer when I see that the inflation story goes away. I'm looking to buy growth. Powerful, powerful statement here. He's 100%, right? Opportunity of a lifetime right here. You want to be a buyer you do not want to run away and miss out on an opportunity we don't get many opportunities like this you usually you get one if you're lucky right this is it right now with what's going on in this world and cryptocurrency folks crypto's here to stay i mean a lot of people don't want to hear it you know but that's just the dead honest truth and then Stuart young he was able to get the emails from the sec check this out and then we move over and we'll start We'll start here. Huge credit to Stu. You we now have the Bill Hidman emails. You can read it all here. We head on over. Here we go. Here's the the SEC's response email draft letter, whatever you want to Stu it. They said this letter is partial response to request data January 2nd and received in his office on January 3rd. So it took about five months for access to Bill Hidman's public calendar and a list of the 63 email recipients he discussed in the Hidman speech content with or any official SEC meetings Jay Clayton had with Ethereum. In regards to item three of your request, official SEC meetings with former Chairman Jay Clayton are publicly available on the SEC's website. In regards to item two of your request, the enclosed 71 pages of, of emails are released with the exception of information withheld under 5 USC. They list the, the rule and the law, and then they tell us the following reason. Then it says under exemption five. Certain responsive information was prepared in anticipation of litigation, forms an integral part of the pre-decisional process, and or contains advice given to the commission or senior staff by the commission's attorneys. It is protected from release by the attorney work product, deliberative process, and or attorney client privilege embroidered in exemption five. 
Under Exemption 6, the release of the information would constitute a clearly unwanted invasion or invasion of personal privacy. So you get it. And then what do we come to find out down here? His public calendar released. We've seen it. We know that a lot of this information that you're about to see and go through, as you can tell, is heavy, heavy redactions. Joel Katz actually chimes in on it. I thought I had it up and saved it right here. He goes, wow, such shocking revelations. I mean, did you see this? Just boxes and blocks of information we can't really read. But what do we see? We see a lot of SEC government email addresses in this, right? Which, obviously, if this was his own speech, why was it going back and forth between a ton of different SEC folks for them to review it? We also see a lot of edits and reviews in the draft, almost making it like that he had to get approval to say certain things. If this is your own speech, why are you looking for approvals or looking for someone to tell you what you can and cannot say? It is your own opinion. If it's your own opinion, you should be able to figure out what you're allowed to say and can't say because it's your own opinion. What I believe we have here is more evidence of the corruption and shadiness that has gone down behind the scenes. If this was such a personal opinion, I believe Bill Himmon would not be have, have been reaching out to all of these folks that work for the SEC, asking them to give their input and insight. As far as it goes, your personal opinion, why do you need other people's input and insight? At the end of the day, if I'm giving my opinion, you're not going to tell me what I can say and what I can't say, because then it doesn't become my opinion anymore. So folks, it's actually... I think this is pretty big news right here. It's exciting to see that we got it. It's exciting to see that the Stuart Young stood up and reached out to the SEC. SEC actually got an answer. I mean, I we do know at the end of the day where this case is going. Attorney Attorney Jeremy Hogan did chime in. He was asked about why such heavy redactions if it left us open for speculation. Hogan said yes. The FOIA response was no surprise and that the SEC is alleging that everything of substance is privileged, but the anticipation of litigation exception is new, but it's no use in this case, unfortunately. I mean, at the end of the day, the SEC is trying to say they want to redo in this lawsuit, right? That's what I got from the from the the response to the lawyer the other day. I'm happy that Ripple Attorney Salmon came out swinging and was like, "Judge, listen, this is ridiculous. This is BS." I mean, they just want to keep the leg. They will drag this thing on for as long as they can. So I'm happy that Ripple finally stepped in and put their foot down, and they're doing something about it. So gotta pay attention there. But this is kind of this is big news. And then, to top it all off, we get Binance is going to invest $500 million with Elon Musk to take over Twitter. Ah, interesting. Very, very interesting. Here is the full list of, of, of investors that are looking to take over Twitter, and Binance was in there. I mean, Honeycomb, another asset management company, Keyworth. Many of these companies you probably don't know. Qatar Holdings, which is, which is an interesting one. But hey, interesting times ahead. It's single day Mayo. It's 7.54. I ought to be to work in six minutes. I still got a shower. I still got to grab something to eat. I think I'm going to be late. But it's single day Mayo. Let's celebrate. Let's have some fun today. That's where I'm going to leave this video, folks. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.